What I was asked to cover today is the public health significance of uh, iron deficiency and what are the interventions to make a difference uh, in terms of outcomes. To summarize, iron deficiency is one of the most important public health problems that confront women and children globally, particularly because deficiency of iron in pregnancy is associated with adverse outcomes and we estimate there are close to around 500 million women uh, of reproductive age who are deficient in iron, largely because of a combination of uh, poor dietary intakes, poverty, and also high burden of disease, including worm infestations and potentially uh, other disorders in many low and middle income countries. Amongst children, a major source of uh, iron deficiency anemia that we see is being born with poor stores of iron because they are growth retarded and they are born to women who are iron deficient themselves. And then beyond the first six months of life, even if they are exclusively breastfed, they rapidly run out of adequate stores in the wake of inappropriate complementary feeding. Both these things together account for close to around 1.6 billion people affected globally with iron deficiency. In terms of consequences, iron deficiency is associated with high risk of adverse outcomes, not only in terms of morbidity and mortality, but also neurodevelopmental outcomes, which has a huge impact on developmental potential and long-term economic growth of societies. What can be done about it? There are a range of interventions that exist, so you can supplement women and children who are deficient with pharmacological iron medications. And there is evidence that giving iron supplements for a reasonable duration of time with the right formulation does lead to a reduction in anemia amongst children and women. It can also have functional benefits in terms of birth outcomes and also in terms of educational achievements in children at risk. But these are expensive and difficult to implement at scale in developing countries particularly because they require for daily use a change in compliance and a change in behavior and good delivery systems that may not necessarily exist. So there is also correspondingly a lot of interest in alternative strategies of which the use of fortification and fortified foods is one. And there has been a lot of interest in trying various types of foods which have been fortified, both commercially fortified foods and also what is called home fortification with micronutrient powders. The summary of our research that I presented uh, at this symposium indicates that fortification strategies, particularly of staple foods and of uh, complementary foods that can be commercially processed, have the advantage of giving a lower dose and potentially being associated with fewer side effects than supplements might. And although presently there are not very many established large-scale programs that have evaluated the effectiveness and the cost effectiveness in particular of these strategies. Going forwards, these are things that can be readily considered because they may have a much greater impact in terms of biological outcomes with significantly less adverse effects. But what is needed is really great public-private partnerships and support strategies to not only implement these at scale, but also put in these within health systems and large scale programs so their potential can be evaluated in terms of cost effectiveness outcomes.